And if you will, take your Bible and turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 this evening. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. My wife and I have been married going on 44 years. The last five years, we've been homeowners. That has its advantages and disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is that if you're a homeowner, you are always having to fix things. I guess one of the best things that ever happened to homeowners, however, is YouTube. Because if you're brave enough, you can go on YouTube, and if you watch enough YouTube videos, you can basically repair anything in your house. Uh, trust me, I've, I've, uh, I've done a lot just by going on YouTube. But house repairs are endless. There's always something that needs to be repaired. And I guess that's just a reminder that our houses aren't permanent. Neither are these earthly houses. In the fifth chapter and the first verse of 2 Corinthians, we read, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle or tent were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. He's talking of our earthly house. He's talking about our bodies. The aches and the pains and the illness, it all reminds us that we live in a disposable house. I want to talk about that and a few other things from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse 7 in just a moment. Heavenly Father, so thankful this evening that we can come together in the name of Jesus, and we have just sung, and that is also the desire of our heart, that you would send upon us showers of blessing. Holy Spirit of God, you are the one that sends the showers. Send those showers of blessing, spiritual blessing, upon your word and through your word tonight. We thank you that you have given us this inspired word of God. May we take it as such. And Lord, may it have personal and very practical and timely application to our hearts. In the end, the glory of God. Your name exalted, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Look at verse 7, if you will, with me in 2 Corinthians 4. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Earthen vessels. Another term for the disposable house that we live in. Earthen vessels, literally jars of clay, clay jars. That's what our body is described as here. God made you a fragile clay jar. And because of sin, your body is cracked, your body is broken, it's decaying, it's, it's disposable. It's a disposable clay jar. Cracked pots aren't a problem if God's the potter. I want you to think a moment about our disposable house, our body. Earthen vessels, as he calls it there in that seventh verse. Really, your body is a container. According to this seventh verse, your body is merely a container. It's a container for a special treasure. And that's what's important. Not the container, but the content. Your body is not what's important. Your body is never meant to be your primary concern, but its content is what is important and what we ought to be focused on. The emphasis on the container will always cause you to lose heart and to despair. Look at what he says in the verses that follow, uh, verses 8 and 9. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed or crushed. We're, we're pressured 
on every side, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but we're not in despair. We are persecuted. We're, we're hunted down like an animal, but we're not abandoned. We're not forsaken. We're cast down, but we're not destroyed. However, if you make your focus, your earthen vessel, the container, you're going to be filled with despair and a losing of heart because you know what happens? You know what is happening? You know what's happened to mine and yours? And that is, it's aging. Might be your birthday today. Your container is aging. Guess what? It's graying as well. Your capacity to perform is diminishing every year that goes by. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's, we're earthen vessels. We're jars of clay. That's who you are. You're a fragile clay jar, and you're not built to last but you're built to be dinged and nicked and cracked and damaged and broken, you're dying. That's who you are. You're an earthen vessel. I want you to look again at verse 7, and I want to concentrate now on the content in the container. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. And the treasure in the context, and really you have to go back to chapter 3 to key in on it, but the treasure is the glory of God. The fact that we have the glory of God inhabiting us, residing in us, and thus reflected in us as, or through us as well. The glory of God, the presence of God in this clay jar, in this disposable house. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19 is often used as a verse to shame us into taking great care of our bodies. And I'm not against taking care of your body, trust me. 1 Corinthians 6.19 says that you are not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body, which is his. That verse is not a call to, to spare your body, but rather it is in the context a call to glorify God through your body by fleeing sexual immorality. That's what 1 Corinthians 6 is all about. The more that we are fixated as Americans, as people, as humans, upon the container instead of the content, the more despairing we will become as we age and as the body deteriorates. What are you most fixated on tonight? Honestly, the container or the content that is called in this verse treasure? What occupies your thoughts the most any given day and your emotions? Verse 7, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Drop down to verses 10 and 11, and I want you to note something else. It's a disposable house, earthen vessels, that is to contain a treasure that is meant to put God on display. A disposable house for a display of God. Look at verses 10 and 11. Always bearing about in the body clay jars, the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest, might be put on display 
that the life, the glory of God might be displayed through these containers, these clay jars. These verses are the reason why God made us such weak, fragile jars of clay. You know, if you go to a museum where there are priceless articles on display, you, of course, expect those valuable museum quality items to be highly uh, uh, guarded, secure, and in uh, perhaps a beautiful case or container. Isn't it interesting? The most valuable thing in the universe, the presence of the glorious God is put in a clay jar. Not in a beautiful case, but in a fragile, weak jar of clay. Not in some elegant, extravagant container. What's the purpose of that? It's deliberate. It's purposeful. And he tells us in that seventh verse why that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Why does God deliberately entrust his treasure, his glorious habitation of our bodies, his glorious presence in your weak, broken, clay jar body? Well, according to that uh, seventh verse, it's so that it is apparent that the glorious power doesn't originate with you. It's not the result of your strong personality or your finely honed mind or your superior training that you've received, but only because God's presence is in you. And we need to realize all the time that we are so weak, we are so fragile, and we need to be honest about that and transparent about that for God's glory to be displayed through our brokenness. His miraculous, surpassing glory put on display through your weak, broken earthen vessel, clay jar. That magnifies God. And you know, he refuses to compete with us. Either we display his strength or we put on display our self-effort, which is really an imitation. It's weakness. It's not strength. Look at verse 12. Here's what he says. So then, death worketh in us, but life in you. A disposable house, a display for a display of God, for uh, and a death for life is what verse 12 is talking about. No one, none of us, are looking to suffer. But we're willing to because in doing so, we can magnify God's glory through our lives. And God is always working mightily through our weakness, through our fragility as clay jars. And through your physical life being crushed, what he says here is spiritual life for others springs forth. It's not about the jar. It's about what's in it. It's not about the container. It's about the contents. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Accept the fact that you're weak, that you're broken, that you're damaged, and uh, that uh, if you do so, you'll then be in a position where you can show God's glory to other people, where you can, uh, God can, uh, can, can uh, cause his life to spring forth from you to others. At a time, God puts us in a place where we feel like we're in a place of death. But if we are 
willing to accept that and ask and take the grace that he says is sufficient for us by faith, what's going to happen is that his glory is going to shine forth and his life is going to emerge through our brokenness, through our death. There's only one way that life comes forth, and that's out of death. It is life out of death. That's the spiritual principle. Jesus uses the physical realm to illustrate that in John 12, 24, talking about his own crucifixion, his own death. He says, except a, a seed, a grain, falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone, but if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. So it's life out of death. It's a death for life that we're talking about here, and there is no other way. If you want others to live, if you have a desire to see others live, you got to die. You have to be willing to be that grain of wheat that falls into the ground. I want to ask you tonight to just think in your heart, how can you die tonight? Is there some area in your life that you could die to? I want you also to think how God might be calling you to show his glory, wherever that might be. It could be as simple, and it's got to start, I believe, in your home. All of us probably have heard at one time or another of the Romanian pastor, Richard Wormbrandt. He's now with the Lord, but he was the founder of the, the uh, Voice of the Martyrs. I, mean, I know that some of you have uh, received the Voice of the Martyrs magazine. Richard Wormbrandt was a pastor in Romania. He spent 14 years in prison for preaching the gospel. And although his captors smashed four of his vertebrae and either cut or burned 18 holes in his body, they couldn't defeat him. In fact, he said, alone in my cell, cold, hungry, and in rags, I was filled with joy every night. And during the time in prison, he turned to a fellow prisoner at one point, someone that he had led to the Lord before they were arrested, and he asked, do you have any resentment against me that I brought you to Christ? And the man's response was, I have no words to express my thankfulness that you brought me to the wonderful Savior. I would never have it any other way. I'm telling you, those two men exemplify the supernatural life that springs up within believers who live, who live on the edge of death to self, so that Christ, his life, emerges. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you would put us in a proper mindset regarding the priorities in our life. That we would recognize that our body is not the most important thing, although that's the thing that we, we pamper the most, we protect the most. Lord, may we learn that it's not about the container but the content that is within. That treasure that we have in this disposable house, in this clay jar that we live in, that content being the glorious presence of the Almighty God himself, Christ in you himself. Lord, we pray that we would be those broken jars 
that could shine forth the glory of the God within us. And that we would see our circumstances, especially the bad ones, to be the means whereby we can be broken like those pictures, those clay jars of Gideon's 300, that the glorious light within us can shine forth and even bring victory over the enemy. We pray in Jesus' name. In closing, we're going to sing 160.